Arab Tov Chavrim, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live and of course all over the news everywhere and conspiracies already abounding over the death of Jeffrey Epstein. And, uh, and of course the question really lies is did he really die or was he murdered? Uh, did, was there a cover-up plan to get him out of prison? All kinds of accusations are coming out or conspiracy theories. Um, Today we picked it up on RT when they had published Jeffrey Epstein takes his own life in his prison cell. And I'm sure that's exactly what uh, the authorities are hoping the world will buy for the time being. Uh, but it just seemed like only a few months ago Epstein had become the, uh, the, the new main topic, especially uh, in light of like uh, newscasts like this one here on Jeffrey Epstein's arrest on sex trafficking charges. Uh, we're talking about a multi-millionaire, I don't know, maybe even a billionaire, Jeffrey Epstein there. Uh, but um, he has certainly rubbed shoulders of the likes of Bill Clinton and, uh, and many others. And now even President Trump uh, tweeting out today, uh, kind of giving more fuel to the fire for the conspiracy theories there. But it just kind of makes you wonder who all is was close to Jeffrey Epstein uh, in this uh, pedophile ring that he was uh, was heading. And uh, is there something more to it than just pedophilia? Does this really, is this a much larger conspiracy? Because we've seen all kinds of things that have come out over the years here, uh, talking about uh, child uh, sex uh, trafficking and uh, amongst the elites and all other kinds of issues that go on. Uh, first, I want to play this from back in July when he was first arrested on sex trafficking charges, and then we'll kind of get into this a little deeper. Man Jeffrey Epstein was arrested in New York Saturday on federal charges related to sex trafficking. The 66-year-old hedge fund manager has long been accused of sexually abusing underage girls. In 2007, he pleaded guilty to two prostitution counts in Florida as part of a controversial deal to avoid federal charges. He was sentenced to 13 months in jail. Former Miami U.S. Attorney Alexander Acosta handled that deal. Acosta is now Secretary of the U.S. Labor Department. In February, the White House said it was looking into the handling of that case and a federal judge is weighing whether to invalidate the agreement. Epstein once counted President Trump and former President Clinton among his friends. He has a bond hearing scheduled for Monday in New York. Did you notice that, though? He considered uh, President Trump and former President Clinton among his friends. You know, I can tell you from experience uh, working with the government there that both Democrat and Republican, there's really no difference. It's just the uh, propaganda that we are fed uh, in the mainstream media that keeps us at bay at believing in whatever they want you to believe in. Uh, just like we have on Vox News here, the conspiracy theories about the Clintons and Jeffrey Epstein's death explain the idea that Bill and Hillary Clinton secretly killed their political enemies, enemies is circulating in right-wing fever swamps for decades. And of course, uh, no different now. There are those that are saying that the Clintons are the one that did it. Well, I can tell you right now that uh, regardless of whether or not he's really dead or not, whether or not he's been uh, whisked off to some other remote place in the world there where no one will ever see him again, or maybe perhaps he was even murdered. Suicide, I, I just don't buy it myself. Uh, although they can make it look like he committed suicide, and they might even give him a little help to commit that suicide uh, to make it even look a little bit better. But I think the issue is more of a major cover-up of a movement that started all the way back in the 1600s by Sabati uh, Levy, actually is the one that, that this all began at. Um, and it is something that has been part of a New World Order movement that has moved rapidly uh, in the ranks over the years. And we're going to look at several different uh, things on this here. Two books in particular I'll be looking at. One by Robert uh, Sefer, uh, The Redemption Through Sin. And then also I'll be looking at uh, Barry Chamish's book, uh, uh, Shabbatai Tzivi, Labor Zionism and the Holocaust. 
Uh, Barry Chamish is also was a, a guest here on Israeli News Live and had had uh, shared with me uh, privately as well as publicly his many attempts of his life to be taken by the Israeli government because of those things that he was exposing. And, uh, and of course, uh, Barry Chamish, also a, a war veteran of Israel's uh, uh, IDF and uh, an Israeli. And a lot of things that could be said there. I want to first take a look at Robert Sefer's uh, uh, 1666 book. And uh, specifically, some things I'm going to uh, speak about in this book here are how the this whole idea of uh, redemption by way of sin got started. And when I say that, and I know this might be sounding kind of awkward, like, Steve, what does this redemption by sin have anything to do with Jeffrey Epstein? Well, Jeffrey Epstein, it has a lot to do with him because the very tenets of what, uh, what became a movement starting in 1666, going up into the 1700s, all the way into modern days to so the Illuminati, the Rothschilds, uh, etc., has been to perpetrate such global sin on such a vast level that this would actually bring about redemption. And some of the names, some of the people in there, the sex orgies, everything else, that yeah, kind of goes along with uh, Jeffrey Epstein. And I think this is one reason why they did not want this to coming out into the spotlight, because this is something that was practiced only in the secret circles there. Uh, actually, I'm going to start here with you here. This is uh, from... Um, Figure out which quite which page we are on here. I have ooh goodness, thought I had an idea which page I was on. I'm not sure, but anyway, uh, in just a moment we'll know the page number. But this is from Robert Sefer's book. There, uh, if you look on the back back here, we also have the Sefirot tree on one of the on the page here that he, this is on. And I and I, I well I'll tell you what I'll look it up real quick here real quick so I can tell you what page we're actually at. Uh, this is on page 10 and 11 inside of his book. I, I didn't want to show the cover because it's a very provocative cover there, uh, but I understand the author is trying to uh, express uh, the, the evilness of everything that's going on. Uh, but on this uh, page 10 right here, they have the Sephiroth tree, and we're going to have to kind of go into this deeply in order for you to really understand what's going on with this, but I'm going to blow this up hopefully to where you can see it a little bit better yourself. Uh, as we read it, he's talking about, he says, but, uh, but what are those holy sparks? Uh, and that's kind of interesting, the word holy sparks. This is something that, by the way, um, I, re I think of Rabbi uh, Winston and uh, the music video that uh, was made from one of his uh, commentaries. And he talks about redeeming the sparks. Well, the sparks in uh, Jewish ideology and Kabbalah is believed that, well, let me just read to you and you'll see what it is. But what are these holy sparks and where did they come from? Isaac Luria, which is a Kabbalist, by the way, whose interpretation of Kabbalah is now most widely used and accepted, explained that God created the world by forming ten vessels. By the way, the ten vessels are what you see here in the Sephiroth tree. All right, those are like the ten vessels, right? Which they normally have a serpent running up through that tree. And uh, really a perversion of the Word of God. Really is perverted. But anyway, uh, is forming uh, ten vessels to, to hold the divine light. God intended this original light to radiate out, fill the world, and illuminate everything around us. But as God poured the light into the vessels, the divine light was so powerful that the vessels couldn't contain it. With a huge explosion, the vessels shattered and sparks of this divine light became embedded into the world of matter. The material world uh, had trapped these sparks of divine light. God's presence was hidden and unable to shine forth. Then became the task for us, presumably the chosen ones, the author writes, to free these holy sparks. The, the manner in which people approach and interact with the material universe could set these sparks free and repair the world. Now we already know this is totally nonsense to the believer of Yeshua because we already know uh, that, well, let's just take a look at it just so we can say we know exactly what we're talking about right here. Let's take and let's go to uh, 
the New Testament. And by the way, the New Testament is not, it is not a Talmudic uh, writing. It is not just commentaries on the Tanakh. You have to remember, God said to Moses that when that prophet came, there would be likening to him that the people were to hear every word he had to say. So it is true Torah, not oral Torah. All right. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, without Him was not anything that made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Hmm. That light was only put, not in ten vessels as we read in the book of Genesis, but rather that light, not a spark, but that light itself was put and breathed into the man called Adam. We read here in Genesis chapter 2 where he breathes in his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. We also find out that when we read in Genesis 1, we find out that it states also in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and now the earth was unformed and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And God said... Excuse me, Yahi Or Yahi Or. Alright, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Nothing about uh, some kind of spark exploding because it was put into ten balloons of some sephiroth tree, but rather it was breathed into the very being of Adam, the man. As we see here, he says, Ipak bepa'av nishmat chayim. He breathed in his nostrils the very breath of life. And of course, this is what John is saying, in him was life. And the life was what? The light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So it's nothing about redeeming sparks as uh, this is being alluded to. So... Whatever they want to think. Anyway, another key aspect of Isaac Luria's interpretation, now known as the Lurian Kabbalah, is that it required active participation to set the stage for the arrival of the Messiah. He designed his new Kabbalistic instructions for liberating holy sparks to bring about the conditions that would set the stage, initiate, or indirectly expedite the fulfillment of Jewish messianic prophecy. In other words... Instead of simply waiting for God to act, the Illyrianic perspective expected Jews to play an active role in bringing forth God's kingdom on earth. This new European Kabbalah unanimously attributed to Illyria was extremely popular at the time and is still most broadly disseminated and used Kabbalistic system taught. I actually had myself a note there, Rabbi Menachem uh, uh, Mendelssohn there, uh, that's pretty much what he was saying to Netanyahu when he asked him, what are you doing to, bringing, to bring forth the Messiah? He says, we're doing all that we can. He says, well, try more. After reading a lot of this book here from Robert Seffer, I actually have a better idea of what Rabbi Men uh, uh, Menachem Mendelssohn really meant, or Schneerson. Now I know what he was talking about. Bring about more of that perversion, more of that sinful nature amongst the people, especially in Israel. No wonder why we have uh, uh, homosexuality per capita. Something my wife brought to my attention, per capita. More homosexuality than any place in the world. Per capita, more abortions than any place on the planet Earth. And then I think to myself, why is it that as believers in Yeshua, we support this. I can understand you really wanting Jewish people to know that Jesus is the Messiah. I could even understand you wanting to support believers in Yeshua in Israel. Now, not, not these ones that are just there to drain your pockets and to give it to the groups there that uh, bash Christians back here. But I'm talking about real genuine Christians there that need help, that live in Israel, that are, that are bashed by the government. I can understand you standing with them. 
But when it comes to standing with a secular government, especially after you hear what you're going to hear this evening, it might make more sense, like I said, about Jeffrey Epstein, why they need to cover up what was really going on, because this is part of a global plot. Anyway, the, uh, the Kabbalah became a mystical syn uh, synthesis between pagan teachings which preceded the Torah and Gnostic elements of Judaism. Many texts pertaining to Kabbalah, included the Zohar, say that the task is not to destroy evil, but to return it to its source, to put it simply to include the left wing, excuse me, to include the left within the right in Zoharic metaphor or to uplift the fallen spark in the Lurianic one. All right, now that's just the beginning there. Let's take a look at a little bit more here. Now, the process is called tikkun, tikkun olam, or repairing the world, and it involves all of one's actions, how one treats all human beings, works, plays, thinks, and interacts with all aspects of the environment at any given moment in time. Therefore, these heretical Kabbalists believe that acts which benefit God include deliberate forays into the world of sin wherein the illusionary nature of evil could be more readily exposed and the sparks thereby elevated to their source. Think about these things when you hear people talking about redeeming the sparks and things like that. Really, it's really, uh, I just only want to say it. All right, page 16 and page 17. I want to bring some of these things to your attention. Now, as I, as I do this, keep in mind... As we are talking here, Jeffrey Epstein, right? This guy right here, multi-millionaire, billionaire, whatever the case may be there, involved in that, taking on his own life. And of course, I think it's a cover-up to protect all those evil ones out there that are heavily involved in this trafficking of young girls and other sexual perversions and immoralities. And it's no doubt why Israel is so much sin is being permitted. Unreal. Unreal. Let's take a look at this. All right. After Sabbatai's death, Sabbatai Levi, now he's the one that was the self-proclaimed Messiah uh, in 1666 there. Uh, but it says in 1676, these sects flourished and continued to indulge in wife-sharing, religious sex orgies, adultery, and incest. The Sabbateans in Sol uh, uh, Salonika and Dolome regularly held celebrations on the 22nd day of the Hebrew month of Adar, known as the Festival of the Lamb. They kept the exact nature of this celebration and carefully guarded secret until some younger members were finally prevailed upon, uh, upon it, reveal it. According to their account, the festival included intoxication and or, uh, orgiastic rite called extinguishing of the lights, which ended in total darkness with the religious sexual sharing of daughters and wives from what we know of this rite, it probably came to uh, Salonika from Izmir, <clears throat> for it's borrowed both its name and, and its contents from the pagan cult of the Great Mother, which flourished in antiquity and continued to be uh, practiced after the general demise of the cult by a small sect of light extinguishers in Asia Minor under the cover of Islam. They said that the violations of the Torah had become its fulfillment, which they illustrated by example of a grain of wheat that rots in the earth. In other words, just as a grain of wheat must rot in the earth before it can sprout, excuse me, so the deeds of the believers must become truly rotten before they could germinate the redemption. This metaphor, which appears to have been extremely popular, conveyed the whole sectarian Sabbatean psychology in a nutshell, in a period of transition, which the redemption was still in a state of concealment. They, they really wanted to keep all this very well guarded, what they were doing. Torah in its explicit form must be denied, for only thus could it too become concealed and ultimately renewed. All right. Now, according to Gershon Scholem, 
He wrote, Sabbateanism is the matrix of every significant movement to have emerged in the 18th and 19th century from Hasidism to Reform Judaism, to the earliest Masonic circles and revolutionary idealism. The Sabbatean believers felt that they were champions of a new world which was to establish by overthrowing the values of all positive religions. And so what they did is they infiltrated every religion. They infiltrated Christianity. They infiltrated Islam. They became members of it. In fact, Sabatin Levy actually became a, a, an Islamic believer before his death. And the man had thousands upon th hundreds of thousands of followers, about a half a million from what I saw the count that was listed in here. This instance of radicals of the potential holiness of sin alienated and offended the average Jew. So that's good to know. The average Jew didn't care for all this and caused even the believers themselves to undergo the severest of internal conflicts. Why? They infiltrated all of their, all of these groups there and it really was causing a lot of problems. The nihilistic tendencies of Sabbateanism still relatively mild compared to what was to follow. And of course, that's going to be Frank there when he comes along, reached a new spark in the 18th century with Sabbatai Zevi's infamous successor, Jacob Frank, whose followers regularly sought redemption through infamous religious sex orgies or uh, solstices and equinoxes. Solstices and equinoxes. Why is there such a fascination with all these uh, moon things and stars and things like that. Well, maybe that's got a little something to do with it. I don't know. Don't know, guys. Born the son of a Polish Sabbatean in 1726, Frank grew up, that's Jacob uh, for Frank, grew up to be a heretical rabbi who claimed to be the reincarnation of both the self-proclaimed Messiah Sabbatai Zevi and the biblical patriarch Jacob, if you can believe that. Ah, uh, jeez, what a what a what a mess! What a filthy mess! All right, this here is actually a picture of that guy. All right, there, Jacob Frank. Um, I don't know who did it, but anyway, it goes on to say he created a new religion now referred to as Frankism, which was instigated by the Lurian Kabbalah and expanded on the redemption through sin philosophy made popular by Zevi. I, you know, I would stay away from Lurian Kabbalah completely. All right, let me drop down here. It did not take long for the Jewish authorities in Poland to excommunicate Frank and his followers due to his heretical doctrines, which included defecation of himself and other controversial concepts such as purification through transgression. The Frankists held annual springtime lamb festivals, which consisted of celebratorial dinner that included drug use, sacrifice, nudity, the exchanging of spouses, daughters for religious sex. What a mess. That was his daughter right there, by the way, who also, E. Frank, uh, she was called the Lady of the Holy Matron. By the way, when it talks in there about that it was taking uh, this, these sexual things from antiquity, if you remember, this is exactly what Paul was dealing with, was the doctrine of Diana, uh, where they believed that the only way that the, the, the men would be, or the women would be safe in their childbearing was for their husbands to go to participate in these sexual orgies at this uh, cult uh, temple called the, the, the Temple of Diana. And this is exactly what was being revived. It was an old cultic, uh, ritual that was going on back in the days of Israel uh, and uh, I'm not saying that it was actually in Israel but you know as far as what Paul was dealing with in his uh, travels was this 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 doctrine of Diana and now it is being pretty much practiced the same ideology of that particular doctrine uh, redemption by sin so Frank totally rejected the traditional interpretation of the Torah. He converted to both Islam and Catholicism. Speaking about infiltration of the Catholic Church, and believe me, he's not the only uh, rabbi to do that. That was done long before him. He often slept with his followers as well as his own daughter while preaching a doctrine that the best way to uh, imitate God was to cross every boundary, transgress every taboo, mix, as he claimed God did, the sacred with the profane. 
At the height of his popularity, approximately 50,000 Jews or ex-Jews, crypto-Jews, considered themselves his disciples. This was far less than Sabbatian Zevi, his messianic predecessor who had had over 20 times as many followers as the prior century. Despite the smaller following, Frank's cult would grow to include some of Europe's, Europe's royalty, nobility, and richest bankers. That only seems to go without saying, right? So, at anyway, the, uh, whoop, we already did this one here. Let me get back over here. Let's find the right place where we got left out. All right, here we go. Now we're looking at page 22 and 23, and then I want to go a little bit into uh, uh, the book by Barry Chamesh as well. But let's take this right here. According to Frank, one had to free oneself of all laws, conventions, and religions to adopt every conceivable attitude and to reject it and to follow one's leader step by step into the abyss. The annihilation of every religion and positive system of belief was true way he expected his believers to follow. Jacob Frank taught that in order to ascend, one must first descend. In Frank's own words, no man can climb a mountain until he has first descended to its foot. Therefore, we must descend and be cast down to the bottom rung, for only then can we climb to the infinite. This is the mystic principle of Jacob's ladder. He he's, claims this, right? Which I have seen and which is shaped like a V. Again, I did not come into this world to lift you up, but rather to cast you down to the bottom of the abyss. Further than this, it is impossible to, to descend, nor can one ascend again by virtue of one's own strength, for the only the Lord can raise one up from the depths of the power of his hand. You know, as I read these things, I, I can see where he gets his ideology, as putrefied as it is. You know, you can see where he gets it. And over here in his book here on page 23, in his classic book, The, uh, the Eliminate Opiate, Rabbi Marvin S. Adelman explains where Jacob Frank got his financing. Now that is very important where he got his financing. Uh, and of course Frankfurt at the time was the headquarters of the Jesuit Adelman Weishaupt, founder of the Illuminati, as well as the Rothschilds Brothers Financial Empire. This is worth repeating. Frankfurt was the birthplace of both the Illuminati and the Rothschild Empire. All right, it's very important we note that there. Now, in 1777, uh, the Illuminati began to cooperate with all the Masonic lodges. Remember what I showed you the other day about this Noahide law thing being a 21st degree Mason? And that it was actually, it was Jews that had infiltrated back in the 1700s in the Masonic lodges there in order to bring about this Noahide law system. Well, now we get it in this book as well. Uh, he says that uh, especially the Grand Orient, with the purpose of infiltrating them, even the Duke of Brunswick, Grand Master of Germany, said in 1794 that the Illuminati controlled the Masonic lodges in the time the Illuminati won control over every Masonic order in the world. All right, Rothschild convinced Weishaupt to accept the Frank Frankist doctrine and af afterward financed the Illuminati. So, and I'm sure people like uh, uh, Epstein are part of the Illuminati. And so the Illuminati and the Rothschilds and all these wicked um, elite Jews there, and this is not all Jews, by the way, friends, so I don't want you people, put, let's don't put all the Jews in the same bucket, you know, I don't mean it that way, but the thing is, the elitists of these Jews here are the ones that are following a Fra Frankist doctrine of redemption through the most sinful, ungodly, putrefied natures you could ever imagine. Uh, let's see. To fill the, the Frankist plot of subverting the world's religions and the Zionist objective of instituting a global government which would be ruled by a king from Jerusalem. Mm, wow, that's interesting, right? King from Jerusalem. We're hearing about that a lot today. In Latin, Lucifer literally means light bearer. As its name implied, members of the Illuminati uh, possessed the light of Lucifer. They believed that people who possessed it were truly enlightened and capable of governing. They avowed purpose and goal was to establish of a Novus Orda uh, sco uh, Scolorum, a New World Order, or a One World Government ruled by its capital in Jerusalem. Mayor Rothschild summoned 12 affluent men to Frankfurt and asked them to pull their fin financial resources. He then presented the 25-point plan that would enable them to gain control of the wealth, 
natural resources and manpower of the entire world. This plan included instructions on how to preach liberalism. Get that. All the way back, <laughs> all the way back here in the late 1700s, preach liberalism to assert political power, initiate class warfare, dismantle and reconstruct all existing institutions and remain invisible until the very moment when the Illuminati had gained such strength that no cunning or force can undermine it. Other highlights of their plan included the use of mob psychology to control the masses. They would systematically advocate and use alcoholic liquors, drugs, moral corruption, and all forms of vice to corrupt the youth. In addition, they planned to use the press for propaganda to control all outlets of public information. While remaining in the shadows, clear of blame, the plan called for the masses to be made to believe that they had been the prey of criminals and that they would restore order and appear as the saviors. Sounds like they're following the plan to the dot in modern days. A key to their success was the infiltration of Freemasonry to take advantage of the Grand Orient Lodges. They plotted to use influences to spread their atheistic, materialistic ideology, ideology amongst the Goim, the Gentiles, which were considered the cattle. Through systematic deception, high-sounding phrases, and popular slogans, slogans, ultimate world government was the goal. Through corporate monopolies, so that even the largest fortunes of the Goyim will depend on them. There would be all out of use economic warfare with a combination of high taxes and unfair competition. Like I said, friends, they're, they're following this right to the letter. Right to the letter. Now, Barry Chamish, I want to I want to share with you some of the things inside of Barry's book right here as well uh, that I thought was kind of very interesting. Uh, that brings it brings these things up right here to the days we're living in now. In the 1940s, the Warburg connection to Hitler was exposed in a startling book by one of their own, Sidney Warburg. He wrote that he was sent to Hitler's court to finance Hitler's rise with American funds funneled through the Warburg banking operation in Hamburg. For further confirmation, read Anthony Sutton's Wall Street and Hitler and who was Felix Warburg allied to but Chaim Wiseman. And by the way, Chaim Wiseman is another figure that I've talked about from the book Holocaust Victims Accused, uh, one of the Zionists there that allowed thousands of Jews to go to their deaths. The Rothschild Connection, another one that Barry talks about as well here. Carey and Clark. He's talking about John Carey. I'm not sure about Clark, if it's Wesley Clark or who, but he says, Carey and Clark are not the only world leaders who deliberately forgot their Jewish fathers. Numerous sources have claimed that Adolf Hitler's real father was a Rothschild, and this assertion is not off the wall. Hitler's mother was working as a maid on a Rothschild estate when her son was conceived either through an affair or rape. No less authority as the History Channel in January of 2004 series on dictators revealed that Hitler raised the Austrian town he was born in to destroy all hints of his Jewish father. Could Hitler have been a Sabbatean? Now he notes that because of how his mother got pregnant. Think about it. The initial financiers of labor Zionism and Theodore Herzl were barons of Rothschild clan. Their goal was the creation of the state in the image of the Sabbatean beliefs, that is, anti-Torah, anti-Talmudic, anti-religious, anti-Jewish, to the Sabbateans, any Jew who does not accept, does not accept, I pass on page 305 of, of Barry's book there. Let's see if, I don't know if I carried that over or not. The, I know it's about the Sabbatean way, then they were out. Now what's interesting though, the Sabbatean way is, in my opinion, has heavily gotten involved in some of the Hasidim or the Hasidic movements. Not all of them, mind you, but some of them have truly embraced those rituals. Let's read a little bit more right here. I'll read some of the stuff we have highlighted in yellow here. All right. Now he's talking about uh, Perfidy Ben Height's book, The Sacred uh, and the Doom by Jacob Nure Nuremberger. These are Jewish writers that exposed uh, the conspiracy that went on with Hitler and his thugs. 
So the deal cut worked like this. The German Jews would first be indoctrinated into uh, Bolshevism and labor Zionism camps, and then with British approval transferred to Palestine. And, and the reason why, let me, let me explain to you guys why I'm reading this right now. I know it's kind of monotonous, but you have to understand this whole thing with Jer Jeremy, uh, excuse me, Jeffrey Epstein and his death. This is all about the ruling and redeeming the sparks, bringing about a one world order, trying to keep it all secretly covered up, all by the ways of sin and evil and doing everything that is ungodly and unrighteous. And so I'm just giving you little examples of this here, right? So the German Jews would first be indoctrinated into Bolshevism, into labor Zionism camps, and then with British approval transferred to Palestine. Most were there by the time the British issued the white paper banning further Jewish immigration. The labor Zionists, not the Jews they wanted, and let the millions of religious Jews and other non-Frankists perish in Europe without any struggle for their survival. So as you can see, they only wanted Frankist. The book that I shared with you guys a little while back, I think mainly on Patreon there, I'd actually read that to you where they said they preferred a shop of Tiffany's. They did not want the tallit wearing Jews in the country. But on all Jews fell for the plan. A noble alternative Zionism road led by Zevi uh, Jab uh, Jabotsky. He led the Jews in demanding free passage to Palestine in a world economic boycott of the Nazi regime. Their labor Zionists did in all their power to short-circuit the opposition. First, they forced all the German Jews in Palestine to use their assets to buy only goods from Nazi Germany. This kept the regime afloat. Then Chaim Wiseman and his Jewish, Jewish agency employed their appointed agents in the U.S. to neutralize uh, Jabonsky and his followers using any means at their disposal. The culminated in Javonsky's suspicious death in New York in 1941. Later, Javonsky's most literate advocate, Ben Height, was run over by a truck and Manhattan sidewalk. His crime was being the first to widely expose the Jewish agency Nazi plot. And again, why, why did they have a Nazi plot? It was that Frankist idea. You have to, the only way you're going to redeem the sparks is through sin. The worst of the worst kind of sin that you can possibly get. Listen, we're going to close here in just a second. One more I want to read to you right here. Uh, don't have the page number for... This is in Barry's book as well, though, so I'm just not sure of the page number. Into this plot against the Jews, we added the Jesuits, who wished with all their heart to wreck the land that produced Luther. But the Vatican's role to the Holocaust is not the focus of this overview. We now turn to, the Amer to America, where the Jewish leadership used all their contacts and resources to make good and certain that unwanted non sabbatean Jews of Europe never again saw the light of day. Again, Sabbatean, or Shabbatean, is the way he's put, he spelled it here. These are that Shabbatean uh, Zevi, who is the 1666 self-proclaimed uh, Messiah who believed that the way to redeem the sparks through Kabbalah was through sin. The lower you get, the better you can redeem it, right? So anyway, we, turn to, we go back to the quote of Jerry Rabo from page 132, Frankist families, both those living in Christians and those living as Jews tried to marry only among themselves in the summers. The German groups regularly held secret meetings in the resort of uh, Carlsbad. It is said by the middle of the 19th century, the majority of the lawyers in Prague and Warsaw were from Frankist families. Get that? The majority of lawyers in Prague and Warsaw, Poland that is, Prague, Czech Republic, uh, uh, Warsaw, Poland, were from Frankist families. United States Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurt is reported to have received a copy of Ava Frank's portrait from his mother, a descendant of the Prague Frankist family. Now you're starting to see the picture. Now let me let me make sure you guys can really see this. This is really important that we understand this, All right? Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter is reported to have received a copy of Ava Frank's portrait from his mother, a descendant of the Prague Frankist family. All right. Now, so you don't forget. Now, Frank 
he's this guy over here, this perverted guy right here, that believes in uh, redemption through sin. Right? He believes in having the sex orgies. You know, use a sacrifice, nudity. I mean, sacrificing children. Killing people. Right? Nudity and exchanging of spouses and daughters for religious sex. That's, that's Frank. That's the one with the Frankist ideology. He was, the, he was the one that took the place of Sabbatian Levy. Or Zevi, excuse me, Sabbatian Zevi. All right, now we go back here to this last page, last thing I wanted to share with you here. So all the way up now in modern days, because you think, okay, this guy, all right, he was from the 1700s. What has he got to do with anything to do with uh, Jeffrey Epstein committing suicide? Well, hello. It's to show you that evil system moved all the way up through history. And here it is in modern times. And they're trying to keep it under wraps. Here's a quote from Frankfurter. The real rulers in Washington are invisible and they exercise their power from behind the scenes. Justice Felix Frankfurter, U.S. Supreme Court. Doesn't that make you all fuzzy inside, make you feel better to know that? Doesn't it make you all fuzzy inside when you think about just how low and degraded Israel has become? With the homosexuality, all the sins and everything that we see there, the abortion rate, murder. Yeah, murder too. Not to mention our neighbors. We don't love our neighbors as ourselves. Not in Israel we don't. No, we kill them. That's the way we deal with it. We just kill them. That's, that's, the, that's the way Israel handles it. Syrians, the where the matriarchs of Israel are all from, all the mothers of Israel for, from all 12 tribes, every one of them, including Sarah, in fact, all from Syria. So we kill off all the Syrians. Makes you wonder who really is in charge of Israel. How are they redeeming the sparks? So to begin with, we already know that's a false doctrine. That's what you get with Kabbalah. Anyway, I don't know. I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. You want the truth? Tune in. You don't want the truth? There's a lot of them out there itching your ears. It's one reason why they're going to change this type of platforms here because they can't fully control it. they got to control it. But first they're going to rescue you. Liberalism. Hmm. Atheist, uh, atheist views. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, even per capita, there's more atheists in living in Israel than anywhere in the world. Like I said, think about what you're supporting. 2,000 years ago, what side would you have been on? You're, you have arrived to that day again. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. If you want to support the broadcast, you can. You can visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. And, um, and by the way, I have not checked since I made the last announcement there, though, but I'm sure we still have some seats available at the conference. I know there's not a lot, but you can visit the conference there. Also, our address, which appears normally right here at the bottom of the screen as we're, as we're closing out here. But uh, also, um, whoop, I can't make it go up. Yeah, maybe I made it, I made it too big. Anyway, our address is also here on the website, and uh, you can uh, you can as well. Well, I say it's there, but it doesn't want to. There we go, right there at the right there. You can donate online just by clicking. Uh, well, I thought you could click it there. Ah, it says click here. You can click there and donate online, or you can use the address there that's right there on the screen. So. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for watching. Arab Tov.